everyone's been like, what's it about? What is this show actually about? And the thing is, is it is about corn. Oh my god, hey, welcome back to my stage YouTube channel. If you are meeting me for the first time, hello, my name is Mickey Joe, and I am obsessed with all things theatre. I recently went to Broadway in New York City for the very first time. While I was there, I saw over 20 shows, and one of them was a little new musical called Shucked. This was at the Nederlander Theatre on Broadway, and I was so, so hyped to see this show. I was invited by the PR team to go and review it, which was very exciting. I got to go to one of the last few preview performances before it officially opened, which is how it works in New York. And I knew nothing about this show, nothing whatsoever. I had heard none of the music. I didn't know what it was about. I didn't know who these characters were, what it was based on. I had zero knowledge going into this, except for the fact that it was about corn. As you can see, it is literally, it's about corn, everybody. I'm gonna say the word corn a lot of times in this video. I feel that coming. But the reason I was so excited, despite knowing so little about the show, is because the word of mouth had been so exciting and just so fun. And everyone who had seen this show wanted to talk about it and was excited for other people to see it. And now I want to talk about it and I'm excited for all of you to see it because this show is a lot of fun. I'm going to be telling you why I have fallen so madly in love with a musical about corn in today's brand new video. I'm going to be answering all of your questions. I am going to explain to you what the plot is about. If you don't want spoilers, fast forward through that section. I'm going to be talking to you about the standout moments of this show, standout performances, and why this was the only like full show I saw on Broadway where there was a mid-act standing ovation. We're going to talk about it. We're going to get to it. But before we do, if you enjoy today's video and you would like to see more of my reviews and my other stagey content, make sure to subscribe to my channel. And if you want to see those videos before everyone else and get to see some exclusive content as well, you can become a channel member. There is a link in the description down below and you can sign up for just £2.99 a month. If you have already seen Shucked on Broadway, let us know what you thought of it in the comment section down below. Now, let's talk about Shucked, y'all. Did I pull that off? Can I pull off a y'all? I don't think I can pull off a y'all. So let's get right into it. Let's talk about what this show actually is. This show has been in development for a really long time and it has had various different titles over the years. I think it was originally based on a TV show called Hee Haw um, and that may have been its title at one point in its development. It was called Moonshine at one point, uh, which is still referenced at one point during the show, but it is now called Shucked. So much of this show is like silly, playful parody. And I think this title is meant to deliberately poke fun at Wicked. Like we've seen other shows that spoof Wicked as a title, like Twisted, the Star Kid Jafar musical is a variant of Wicked. So is Unfortunate, the untold story of Ursula the Sea Witch. They use adjectives the same way Wicked is an adjective that describes the Wicked Witch of the West. And I think Shucked, while not an adjective, the, the, the Ked, I think it's Shucked. This is my theory. Anyway, it's poking fun at another Broadway musical. It is Shucked. But you're here because you want to know what this show actually is. So it describes itself as a musical comedy and it's got quite a classic plot to it, really, in terms of its structure. This is a fable. We're introduced by two storytellers who are hilarious, and we're gonna get back to them later, to the fictional town of Cobb County, a very insular, gated community, gated not by traditional walls, but by walls of corn. Corn is everything to these people. They are all about raising the corn and living off of the corn. They have businesses and livelihoods built entirely around the corn. These people are like dangerously obsessed with this corn in a very endearing way. So when the wedding of two young sweethearts is interrupted by the sudden wilting of some of the onstage corn, I'm not kidding, this prompts widespread panic and our heroine Maisie decides that she needs to fix this and she decides against the wishes of her friends and family to 
go out into the world to the cultural metropolis that is Tampa, Florida, where there's a little bit of confusion and she stumbles upon a business where there's a man who describes himself as the corn doctor. Now he is a podiatrist treating the corns on people's feet, but she mistakes him for someone who can help fix her corn. When he accidentally discovers that the rocks that naturally occur in Cobb County may be worth an enormous amount of money, he decides to go with her, but his motivations aren't pure. There is also a little bit of an unexpected romantic spark between them, and when she returns to the town, attitudes and perspectives and relationships have changed, and the plot kind of ensues from there. It's a little like The Music Man, but with corn. Some friends become enemies, some enemies become friends, some relationships change, some are unexpected, and there are a whole lot of jokes and fun songs in the meanwhile. Basically what this show is, is a combination of fantastic, genuinely brilliant and well-written country music, and the most silly, ridiculous, wonderfully stupid one-liners I have ever heard in a book musical. I like to say that it combines a thigh-slapping book with a knee-slapping score. Tonally, it is similar to something like a Something Rotten or an Avenue Q or a Book of Mormon because it is so, so funny. Like, you will be laughing non-stop, but the songs aren't necessarily comedy songs. That being said, they are very witty because they poke fun at lyrical conventions within country music. Like, there's a song that one character sings called Somebody Will, where the opening lyrics are, I was raised on a Bible and a hammer and a nail. When I wasn't raising corn, I was raising hell. Like, that's so deliberately ridiculous. It's like taking country song values to the hundredth degree, but they're not necessarily laugh out loud comedy songs like in some of those other shows that I compared it to. Let's give credit to all of these writers. Let me tell you who I'm talking about. So the music and lyrics are by actual country music writers, Brandy Clark and Shane McNally. The book is by Robert Horn and bringing the whole thing together is the masterful director, Jack O'Brien. So many publications do not give star ratings to shows on Broadway, but I will go as far as to say that this was one of my favorite things I saw in New York. I don't think it was necessarily critically the peak or like artistically the strongest thing that I saw. I don't think this is about to win a Pulitzer. I think it's actually an underdog contender for best new musical at the Tonys. Do not rule it out of that race, but definitely it won my heart. And if there was one Broadway show, if I had to pick right now, one Broadway show I wanted to see again, it would be Shucked. Which also makes it probably my biggest recommendation to people. If I think that they're gonna vibe with this show and if I hear that anyone's going to New York, I have been saying to people, go and see Shucked because you're just gonna have a great time. That's what this show is. Like I said, it combines all of these jokes in the book. They are constant, they are so funny. They're not specific to like country as a musical genre. They're not specific to the South or anything like that. They're just funny because they're funny. They're also not sophisticated whatsoever. They are just dumb one-liners, which are my favorite thing. And the songs are genuinely so, so good and so lively. And if you are any kind of a country music fan, I think you will really enjoy them. As of right now, the cast recording is being slowly released. Two songs have been released so far as singles, Somebody Will and Independently Owned. And I'm very excited for the rest of it to drop. Maybe I'll do a reaction here on YouTube, but I just, I have so much love for this show, honestly. I want to talk about the staging and choreography as well. Let me see who I'm shouting out here. So the choreography is by Sarah Oglebe, and there is cornography in the opening number that already had me sold on this show. Like the opening is so, so strong for how they introduce the whimsical tone of the show. If you didn't know when you were arriving in the theater what the heck this was gonna be by the end of that opening number, you know exactly where you are and what this show is. And that is what an opening number ought to do. I've said that many a time. While I'm talking about choreography, there's also a number in the second act that features barrels in such an impressive way. And they are like riding over the barrels and surfing over the barrels. And like, it's, it's so, so cool how they use them on that stage. It's so like no holds barred. It's high adrenaline barrelography that I enjoy very, very much. And that's almost like, this is just a great number. Aside from even being a comedy show, this is just an impressive number and a rousing song at this point. Like it's so much fun. I wanna talk a little bit more about some of the other creative contributions. Scott Pask's set design, the whole thing is in a barn. It's a two level barn. It's got a roof, it's got walls. I love a set with walls. I just love the detail of this set. We don't need to physically be transported to all of these other locations. They can create that. You understand what you're looking at. You're seeing this set, which is giving sort of tonal and cultural context to everything without being the exact location. Like the whole show doesn't take place in a barn. We are outdoors, we're in Florida, but it's the perfect set. 
and also a deliciously rich and detailed and expensive looking set. I like that. Tilly Grimes costume design, I also really enjoy. I like that there is a color palette that all of the characters in Cobb County draw on for all of their outfits. They all look cohesive, they all look like they come from the same place, and then we go to Tampa and everything looks completely different. I like that. So I feel like I'm building towards talking about the defining standout moment of this show. I told you earlier on that there was a mid-act one standing ovation, and if you've watched my New York vlogs, you will already know who it was delivered by. This comes from Alex Newell, and it's the song called Independently Owned. They've already released this as a single, sensibly. Let me tell you, the reaction that this gets in the theatre is enormous. Instant standing ovation from the audience the night that I saw the show. I have been told that it's happened at least three other times, I think. It's an incredible moment. It's the vocal performance and not just like the sounds being created by the vocal performance. It's the presence and it's the physicality and it's the ferocity and the intention and the way Alex Newell sings, yes, the notes are incredible. Yes, the growling and the tone and the attack is all incredible, but it's the intention behind it. It's so dynamic. It's such a soulful, powerful, but still fun and charming. Like the whole thing is sung with a wink, but it's belted the hell out of. It's an incredible moment in the show. In terms of what the song actually is, this is Alex Newell's character whose name is Lulu, and she owns her own whiskey refinery business where, of course, she is making whiskey out of corn, because what else would she be doing in Cobb County? And she's describing herself using all of the adjectives that also apply to her business. So she says, I'm independently owned and operated, and she's comparing herself to the whiskey business, basically, and, the way, and she's describing herself as an empowered woman by likening herself to her successful business. Honestly, it's just a playful lyric, and me even describing it in that much detail feels silly, but that's what it is. So the context of this is that she's singing it to the interloper from Tampa, Florida, because she ain't too trusting of him and his big city ways, and so she's letting him know, slightly flirtatiously, what she's all about. And it's just, it's such an old school style of a number to even just give a character a song like that when they've already been introduced to the audience, just to kind of reaffirm, oh, you're about to find out a little thing about me. It's quite classic. It reminded me of like, whatever Lola wants in Damn Yankees. I don't know if we're still writing songs that do that structurally in shows anymore, and I think it's fantastic. But it's so, so satisfying to have this character just sitting in her authority and confidence, just screlting this song at this man who is becoming increasingly just bowled over by this performance, as are the entirety of the audience. It's an epic number, it's worth the price of admission, go see Shucked just to see Alex Newell perform this song. If I haven't sold you on that recommendation, I don't know how I can. Let me talk to you about the rest of the cast, because there are so many talents on the stage at the Nederlander Theatre. So Caroline Inabikla plays Maisie. She is our protagonist. She's a very sweet and endearing character to have at the heart of this story. And she has the beautiful, sweetest voice that lends itself so nicely to this country score. I mean, there's a lot of shades within country music. I'm not a huge expert on the genre, but what I learned from Shucked is that you can have country songs that sound 12 different types of way, and you can have a lot of different voices that bring out different styles from those songs. So hers is a lot sweeter, it's a very like kind of a contemporary Broadway voice, but it also works really well for country. A very different kind of a voice is Andrew Duran's rock tenor. At the beginning of the show he plays her fiance, and let's just say they go on a little bit of a romantic journey over the course of the show. His character's name is Bo, and he is a self-described old-fashioned guy. He just wants to fix the corn, he doesn't trust this interloper that she has brought back from Tampa with her. He's a romantic at heart, he's hugely endearing, and he gets some excellent songs within the show. I also want to mention John Bellman, who completes this little central love triangle. He plays Gordy, the character from Tampa, Florida, who is pretending to fix the county's corn. He does a great job of giving you this sort of cartoon con man characterization and then sort of softening his resolve a little bit to make sure that he's still likable. You don't dislike anyone in this show and you don't resent any of the plot that's happening. It's just 
fun and ultimately very charming and lighthearted. So I told you earlier I would come back to the storytellers. So these are two characters that tell the story of the show. They are two narrators that share this expositional dialogue and have so many one-liner jokes that they pour into this book with a bit of a contemporary sensibility. We can tell that they are a little more worldly than the characters in the story that they are telling, and maybe we'll find out why that is by the end of the show. They are played by Ashley D. Kelly and Gray Henson, and they get to put so much personality into these roles. I love these storyteller characters. I would love to get to see a bunch of other people play these characters because I feel like you can bring so many different things because all this character is, is someone who tells the story and tells a lot of jokes. So I feel like there are 50 different ways that you could play these characters. Gray Henson's is not a million miles from his Damien in the original Broadway cast of Mean Girls. His joke delivery is exactly as funny as it was on the cast recording of that show. And Ashley D. Kelly does a brilliant sort of a raised eyebrow moment. Like she's also wickedly funny in this show. But the funniest, I do have to say, the funniest person on stage is Kevin Cahoon. He plays a character called Peanut and I don't want to use the phrase village idiot because it's demeaning and also they're not really in a village, but maybe that's Peanut. His character is so structurally satisfying because he'll be in a scene and someone in the context of a different ongoing conversation will be like, hey, Peanut, what do you think like about this thing that we're talking about? And he will turn to the audience and he will say, I think, and he will then say three random things that he thinks that are all the most hilarious, like off the cuff, one liner off the top of his head, things he's ruminating on, things that you have ever heard. This is where so much of the comedy comes from. It's either the storytellers telling you the best jokes ever or this character, Peanut, and he gets so many great ones. I heard that these jokes were changing a lot over previews. I feel like it would be great if he would just put in completely different random ones every single night, but I don't know who could possibly write as much gold dust as he delivers in these one-liners nightly because they are so, so funny. I don't want to ruin any of them for you, but some of the best ones are still playing on my mind because they're hilarious. If I had any area where I think the show could have been improved, I think with so funny a book, maybe the songs could be a little bit funnier. I like that they have this really authentic and genuinely very good country flair and that that's what the score of this show is. And I like that so many of the songs have so much heart. I like that Alex Newell is given the opportunity to pop off vocally, but it can start to get the littlest bit jarring when you have laughing, laughing, laughing in the scenes, and then you're not laughing during the songs. The songs are much more sentimental or just a very genuine and heartfelt I want song. Maybe just even sprinkling them with a couple of jokes so the whole thing feels slightly more cohesive. Like we had a funny book and funny songs. They don't have to be comedy shtick songs, but they can be a little bit wittier. That being said, I have friends who have seen this show and thought the songs were hilarious because they're country music fans and they understand what it's parodying. I also think if you're not a country music fan, you don't listen to that much country music, you could see this show and not really understand where the wit in these lyrics is coming from because you don't consider what it's poking fun at in the first place. But I also think that this show exceeds so well at what it is setting out to do. It's silly and it's funny. It's the most laughs that I had in any theater that I went to. It's the most joyous, uplifting time that I had. It's such an easy recommendation because when I send someone to a show, I want them to have a great time. And I know that everyone who goes to Shucked is going to have a great time. I can guarantee you that. If you're looking for something incredibly highbrow, incredibly artistic, then there is a huge amount of creative merit in Shucked, but this is not necessarily that. It doesn't take itself too seriously. It's a silly little show about corn. But for the corniest night on Broadway, look no further. Those have been my thoughts about Shucked. Let me know what you've thought about the show if you have seen it already. And thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you have enjoyed. If you did, make sure to subscribe to my stage YouTube channel so you don't miss any of my upcoming reviews. And again, if you want to see more of my reviews and if you want to see them before everyone else and get some exclusive content as well, click on the link in the description and you can sign up to become one of my channel members. I hope that everyone is staying safe and that you have a stagey day. For 10 more seconds. I'm Mickey Joe Theater. Oh my god, hey. Thanks for watching. Have a stagey day. Subscribe! <laughs>